Jim Corbett A naturalist and a pioneer who worked to preserve and protect the fierce proud cat. Jim Corbett was deeply concerned about the fate of tigers and their habitat. He played a key role in establishing India's first national park in the Kumau Hills, the Haley National Park. This park was renamed in his honour in 1957. And the last of the seven tigers passed within ten feet of the camera lens. What would you have done, Colonel Corbett, if it had seen and attacked you? I should have thrown at it a khaki cushion, which I always carry in case of emergency. But a cushion? How would that have helped? A friend of mine once saved his life by throwing a rolled khaki blanket to a tiger who was about to spring at him. The tiger stopped to inspect the blanket long enough for my friend to shoot it. And you hoped the cushion might help you do the same? Well, I never carried a gun when I went out to photograph the animals. Only my camera and the cushion. Then what? I hoped the tiger might be interested in the cushion long enough for me to get away. This conversation took place on 10th October 1951. Corbett had just finished screening his wildlife films and viewers were asked to put questions. With every hunter comes a time when he starts questioning whether it is worth his while cluttering up a house with hide and horn. Besides, seeing the decimation of wildlife over the years, he pauses and asks himself the question, Will anything be left for the coming generations? A lot of people today think that the preservation of wildlife and other ecological matters are newfangled ideas. If that is so, Corbett was a pioneer. He was not a killer sportsman, and all his writings plead for the preservation of wildlife. What he himself destroyed in terms of tigers, were mostly those that were dangerous to man. On 21st May 1955, the Delhi edition of The Statesman reproduced a letter Corbett wrote in 1948 to an unidentified friend on the tigers of India. It read, For twenty years I have fought in defence of wildlife and my opponents have invariably been people one would have expected to help and not to oppose. Men, and in some cases women, with a bloodlust, are always ready with an excuse. Potential man-eater, possible cattle killer, and so on, and the excuses they have made are now being made by their successors. Until India realises that wildlife is an asset, the killing will go on. Two years ago, Lord Wavell asked me the same question about tigers that you have, and I told him that in my opinion there were 3,000 tigers in India. When he asked me how long I thought tigers would survive, I said that except in sanctuaries and one or two Indian states, tigers would be wiped out in ten years. The situation has nearly come about. An earlier warning came in 1944 in the author's note in Man Eaters of Kumau, where he wrote, there is, however, one point on which I am convinced that all sportsmen, no matter whether their point of view has been a platform on a tree, the back of an elephant, or their own feet, will agree with me, and that is that a tiger is a large-hearted gentleman with boundless courage, and that when he is exterminated, as exterminated he will be unless public opinion rallies to his support, 
India will be poorer by having lost the finest of her fauna. What exactly turned Corbett into a naturalist? According to the Reverend A. G. Atkins, it happened one day on a duck shoot. In the 1930s, Atkins was the pastor of the Union Church at Nainital for two summers. One evening, after Corbett had screened his first tiger film and given his wildlife lecture, the pastor walked Corbett halfway home to the lake. The road is all downhill and the two chatted. After some time, the priest came to the point and asked him what made a hunter a photographer. Here is the story of the conversation, as the priest called it. He, Corbett, had always been fond of shikar in the ordinary sense of the term, going out for hunting or shooting with not much thought of anything else but the fun and sport of it. He was known as a skilled jungle man and was often asked to lead parties out for a good shoot. One day, he was out with three military officers in one of the lake and river areas of North India. They came upon a large batch of waterfowl, literally thousands of them. The officers began shooting. They went on and on, following and killing their game till they had killed over 300. They could not possibly carry them away for any use. It was simply unrestrained slaughter for the crude pleasure of it, said Jim. That sickened me and opened my eyes to what ordinary uninhibited hunting and shooting meant. I resolved from that time that I would use my jungle law for a different kind of shooting, and in that way I began to take photographs of wild animals and jungle life. It requires much more of my skill and gives me an even greater thrill to get good pictures of my animals than when I used to hunt just to kill. Catch them young, they say. Corbett now started lecturing on wildlife at Nainital. At Wellesley, the girls looked forward to the yearly visit of Corbett. He usually wore shorts and shirt and a pullover. Corbett would lecture on his favourite subject, the jungle telegraph. A tiger is coming, he would announce, and then mimic a series of bird calls, jungle babbler, drongo, peafowl, and then the animal calls. Langur, Barking Deer, Cheetal and Sambar. These produced a solo effect perforce, for the human sound box has its limitations mimicking a jungle cacophony or the racket raised by frightened Langur. The warning call of the deer tribe is solitary. The Munchak barks, the Cheetal pooks or bells and the Sambar ponks. The calls would change with the tiger's activities. Now it is in cover, now moving, now stalking, and now sleeping. Corbett would announce, varying the intonations. He would build up the climax with a tiger's growl, first subdued and then full-throated. The atmosphere for this last bit of performance was built up by putting out the lights. Before it happened, he would dramatically announce, Anyone with a weak heart may go now. No one ever left, and squeals and giggles followed. All the Nainital boys' schools also had the benefit of this annual performance. He often lectured at the schools and colleges of Lucknow. At Kaladungi, Corbett carried on a one-man war against poachers. Old residents say that he knocked down the gun of a poacher as he carried it on his shoulder, parallel to the ground, with a well-aimed rifle shot on the butt. <laughs>